I, I heard the news when I was returning from my lunch in Leith uh, later in the afternoon, uh, and uh, I was walking along Heriot Row when a car pulled up across the road uh, near the railings. Uh, a lady in her 60s or maybe 70 or so got out and introduced herself as a former neighbour and widow of a, of a judge who died recently uh, and, and congratulated me on the news. And I said, oh, what news? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so she told me that her daughter had phoned from London to alert her to the fact that uh, I, I had got this prize. And uh, I, I heard more about it, obviously, when I got home and started reading the messages. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel about winning the prize? How, how do you feel, feel about, about winning the prize? Uh, how do I feel? Well, well I'm obviously delighted and rather relieved that, in a sense, it's, it's all over because it's been a, a long time of coming. Um, maybe I should mention that as long ago as 1980, uh, an old friend who uh, happened to work in Sweden visited Edinburgh and told me that from a colleague of his in physics, he'd learned that I'd been nominated for the prize so I was already then, in 1980, alerted to the possibility. Uh, in terms of later events, it, it, well, it seemed to me that, uh, uh, for many years, that, that the experimental verification might not come in my lifetime. But since the uh, start-up of the LHC, it's been pretty clear that they 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 would get there, and uh, despite some mishaps, they did get there. So uh, after July last year, uh, it, it seemed to be just a question of of which year. Uh, last year would was would have been premature, because the. Uh, announcement from CERN in July last year simply said they had found a Higgs-like particle. Uh, in the spring of this year, they firmed that up and called it a Higgs particle. So then uh, it, it was really tied up experimentally. Uh, and I, I think the, at that stage, the, the, uh, the prize was probably on its way. Next question, there's one here. Yeah. Okay. Could you either perhaps move out to the side, please, the, the photographers? Hi, Michael Glackin from The Times. Uh, you've mentioned, uh, Professor Higgs, that uh, you're obviously delighted at, at, at getting the prize. Did you celebrate in any specific way when you heard the news? Or have you celebrated yet? The celebration. Have you celebrated well, yet? Well, um, uh, 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 there was a, a celebration... Uh, of a group of us uh, 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 last night after the lecture by Frank Close. That was a, a, a certainly a, a, a start. And uh, I uh, shall be celebrating with my family with the help of a bottle or two of, sh of champagne uh, early, early this evening. Uh, it hasn't been possible to get us all together before that. I, I should say that when we came back from CERN last year, Peter refused to have some Prosecco on the plane, and he had a can of London Pride instead. So before this evening, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me add, we are not being sponsored by <laughs> not being sponsored, Pride, no. although not we might be prepared to uh, discuss sponsorship with them. Uh, so the next question, please, I think the lady there. Um, Rebecca McQuillan from The Herald. I'm just wondering, um, you, the prize has obviously catapulted you to a new level of fame. How do you feel about having that level of international recognition? You have been catapulted to a new level of fame. How do you feel about your new uh, celebrity status? <laughs> Well, I, I, I think I face the immediate future with some foreboding because uh, having experienced the wave of attention which 
followed the announcement at uh, CERN in July uh, 2012, I anticipated that this last announcement would trigger, uh, well, an order of magnitude more attention. So I, I think I'm, I'm going to have difficulty in the next few months uh, having any of my life to myself. So, um, the lady at the back, yes. Uh, yeah. Hello, my name is Guo Chengji from China Xinhua News Agency. Um, uh, my question is, when you heard the news of winning the prize, if it make you have a bigger appetite uh, while you are having your lunch, <laughs> this. And another question is, as the CERN confirmed the existence of the Higgins boson, do you think CERN should also win the prize? Thank you. Okay. The, the two parts. So, first question is uh, whether you uh, had an increased appetite when you heard the news, but I think the, I think the point was that Peter didn't hear the news until after he had had lunch. <laughs> yes. uh, so it might have aided his digestion, but it didn't aid his appetite. Uh, but the, the specific question is whether you think CERN uh, should uh, receive a prize for the discovery. Well, cl well, cl clearly, the, the, clearly they they should, or uh, but it, it's I, I think it's going to be even more difficult for the Nobel Committee to to, to allocate the credit when it comes to an organisation like like CERN. Uh, it, more difficult than it it was for them to decide which theorists to award the prize to. Uh, I should remind you that um, although only two of us have shared this prize, uh, Francois Anglais of, of Brussels and myself, that the work in 1964 uh, in, involved three groups of people, two, two in Brussels. Unfortunately, Robert Brote uh, uh, died a few years ago, so is no longer able to be awarded the prize, but he would certainly have been one of the winners if he'd still been alive. But there were three, three others who also contributed. And uh, it is already uh, difficult to allocate the credit amongst the theorists. Uh, uh, although people seem to, a lot of people seem to think that, that I, I did all this single-handed. It was actually part of a, th a theoretical program which had been started in 1960, and the the man who who really initiated it uh, was Yorukiro Nambu, originally from Japan, who is now back in Japan, and he was awarded a share of a prize in 2008. So it's part of a of a story which goes back at least to 1960, and and 1964 was just a, 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 a what turned out to be a rather successful episode in that story. Uh, can, I, can I add to that? I think that um, other organizations don't have the same rules, and Peter will be receiving an award from the Prince of Asturias Foundation in October, that's uh, from the Spanish royal family, and CERN is sharing that with Peter and Francois Anglais. So CERN is being recognized, and that prize will be uh, accepted for CERN on behalf by, by the Director General. So there have been occasions when CERN have been rewarded, it's just that the Nobel Committee's rules don't allow it. So here, there's a question here first. Gillian Bowditch from the Sunday Times. Um, given that very generous uh, answer, uh, Professor Higgs, should the Higgs boson be renamed to um, incorporate perhaps Professor uh, Anglais? And, and also my second question is, um, what are the practical applications of the discovery of the Higgs boson? I mean, what is possible now that wasn't possible before? Uh, well, uh, uh, on the question of, of, of names, I, 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 th I think uh, re renaming it is, is... I mean, it may end up just being identified by, by a Greek letter or something of that sort. Um, the, uh, the, the attention has, has been mostly on th this particle because th discovering it was, was really vital to checking that the, the whole theoretical structure was, 
was, was, was co correct. Um, but really, the, the, I think the important uh, br breakthrough in, in 1964 by that, the group of, group of theorists was what is now being called the Brout Anglais Higgs mechanism, which is the way in which uh, mass is generated for the particles which carry the weak force between elementary particles. And that which originally, uh, by, as a result of su some accidents, had my name at attached to it uh, rather un unfairly, is, is generally, I think, referred to as the, the brout Anglais higgs mechanism. When it comes to the particle, the problem is, is that the, 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 the were there was, there was a much more explicit reference to it in, in a paper which I wrote. Somewhat ironically, the reference to it was put in uh, in a second version because the first version of the paper had been rejected. So it's rather accidental that my name is attached to the particle, but I, I perhaps, simply because I drew attention to it, have a stronger connection than, than the others. So, uh, I, I mean, getting rid of the name Higgs boson will probably be difficult. Uh, as for the second question, the practical applications, well, you can't really, really use this thing for much because it, <coughs> it, it, it lasts an extremely short time. When it's said to be discovered at CERN, what is discovered is, in fact, the, uh, the, the tracks which result from what it what it decays into in a very short time. So it's not the sort of thing that you can, you can easily make a beam of and, uh, and use for bombarding tumors or something of that sort. Uh, and the, the consequence of this discovery is much more in terms of, of, of what is beyond the present generation of experiments in CERN, the thing, kind of thing which will be done when the machine starts up again in two years' time. And the hope and expectation is that, that the, the further discoveries t for which the uh, so-called Higgs boson gives maybe so, possibly some hints uh, will um, give us more insights into a relation of particle physics and... So it's not so, it's something that's, that's slightly frustrating, isn't it? Uh, we were hoping to bring you a little bit more of Professor uh, Peter Higgs, uh, Nobel Prize winning scientist, of course. Um, but uh, sadly, for a, a brief period at least, we seem to have lost the line to Edinburgh University. But uh, there you saw his uh, first public reaction to the award uh, by the uh, Royal Swedish Academy of Scientists, Sciences that he jointly shares now with the Belgian Francois Englert. And very self-deprecating mm. it was, too, if you were with us at the moment where he was describing how he first heard about his Nobel Prize for physics. He said he was walking along the road in, in Leith, along Harriet Row, and a neighbour jumped out of a car and stopped him and said, congratulations. And he said, well, congratulations oh, for what? what? <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the existence, of course, the so-called God particle, that's what uh, some of the questioning there was, was, uh, was uh, entering into, uh, said uh, to give matter its substance or its mass. It was... Uh, Proved 50 years on, of course, and this is the reason for the award by this team from the European Nuclear Research Facility. You heard reference there to the CERN uh, facility in Geneva, Switzerland, in 2012. And as I mentioned, he shares uh, the prize with the Belgian Francois Engler. And it's quite interesting to look at the ranks of some of the past winners of that particular Nobel Prize for Physics. They include... Marie Curie and uh, Albert Einstein to uh, name but two. And there are one or two pretty uh, luminous names to add to that list as well. 